This little puppy, which I know is a lightweight stand, you sometimes see them called master stands, extremely versatile, very, very common piece of kit that you find all over the place. You often get them in your first flash kit that you buy. You'll find them in higher studios the world over. Handy little things, also, like the name says, very lightweight, really, really portable. I'm gonna take you through how to use them, how to make the best of them, and all their pros and cons. So as their name implies, these are lightweight stands. They're not heavy, which of course makes them nice and portable, but that means that anything you add to the top of them is going to make them top heavy. So do make sure you use some ballast if you feel the need, and probably even if you don't feel the need. There's lots more info on ballast on its own dedicated ballast video, the link of which is over here somewhere. For maximum stability with your lightweight stands, open the bottom section out, as is normal, and then place the bracing legs parallel to the floor or whatever surface you'll put them on. This will ensure that they're at their widest and most stable. It's okay to have the legs a bit narrow if you needed to save some space, but do be careful if that's the case because they'll become even more unstable. What's worth remembering is that the spigot at the top is the same as a standard spigot, so it will mount a flash head, tungsten lights, flash guns with an adapter, super clamps, anything that takes a standard spigot. Beware of over tightening the knuckles that lock the sections in place though. You may think you're being more secure by tightening them as far as humanly possible, but what you're probably doing is making a dent in the tubes that make the sections up, because they are of course just tubes of metal. And before long, you won't be able to open or close the stand very easily at all, or may even have jammed it completely open or shut. I can hold my hand up and say I've done this myself more than once. Now we come to the most controversial issue with any stand, but particularly with lightweight stands where it's most common, the thick first or thin first argument. Now there's enormous amount of controversy over this. This is nearly as bad as PCs versus Mac or Nikon versus Canon. The thicker sections of the stand are obviously stronger and more stable than the thinner ones, so it makes sense to extend the thickest sections first. Well, that is until you reach a point where you can no longer reach the knuckles at the top to adjust the height. Extending the thinner sections first means you can extend to full height, but of course the stand itself becomes a bit vulnerable. What I suggest you do is think ahead when extending it. If you are pretty certain before you start that your light is only going to need to go to a certain height, extend the thickest section first. But if you're uncertain of how the set is going to be lit, I would extend thin first because it then got the choice to keep extending if you want to. These stands though are really handy and very very versatile whether they're in the studio supporting lights or out on location or used to angle a reflector or creating a background frame. They're pretty inexpensive too even if you buy them outright rather than getting them as part of a kit and as long as you're careful with them they last years. I've got ones that are nearly 20 years old now. Just remember that the clue is in the name lightweight and don't expect them to do the job of something that weighs significantly more and is also built to match. Well, that was good to know, wasn't it? If you want more of that sort of information about basic equipment and the fundamentals of studio photography, there's a playlist up here, or you can go to photosmudger.teachable.com for a full online course in the like, or my blog at photosmudger.com, which has lots of in-depth blog posts about creativity and the business of photography. Help yourselves.